My name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. In this short video, we'll provide instructions for completing an inspection of an evaporative condenser using the checklist from Appendix B in IIAR Standard 6. The checklist contained in IIAR 6 Appendix B are derived from a legacy document named IIAR Bulletin 109. For years, the Bulletin 109 checklists, or B109s, served as the gold standard for documenting annual mechanical integrity inspections for ammonia refrigeration equipment. In 2019, IIAR retired Bulletin 109 when the first edition of Standard 6 was published. Standard 6 addresses the minimum requirements for inspection, testing, and maintenance of ammonia refrigeration systems and includes slightly altered versions of the B109s in Appendix B. The checklists are typically two pages. The first page contains contact and equipment information, and the second page has the inspection checklist. While all the information on the second page will change year to year with the equipment inspection, much of the information on the first page should stay the same. For this reason, you may only have to fill out the first page for each piece of equipment once. For subsequent years, you should only have to fill out the second page. The simplest part of completing the condenser checklist is filling out the contact information. Each IIAR6 checklist requires the inspector to indicate the location, owner, and physical address of the system. The contact's name and phone number should be the facility representative responsible for ensuring the inspection is completed. Additionally, the inspector must write his or her own name and the date of the inspection. The ID or tag number belongs in the upper right corner and can typically be found on the equipment label or PNID. The manufacturer model and serial number in the section titled Equipment Data and Limits can be obtained from the condenser's nameplate. Many of the condenser manufacturers use the first two digits of the serial number to indicate the year the condenser was manufactured. The condenser submittal or catalog is needed to populate the other fields in this section. For example, this condenser has a design condensing pressure of 350 PSIG and a normal ammonia inventory of 1,275 pounds. Likewise, the data pertaining to the fan motor and pump motor can be obtained from the motor nameplates. In this section, you will see items such as voltage, frame size, belt quantity, and belt size. For fans and pumps that are direct drive, the fields pertaining to the belts should be marked NA. Make sure to follow all lockout tagout procedures when working in close proximity with unguarded rotating machinery. The final information required on the first page of the condenser checklist is entitled Purge Point Data. If an auto purger is installed, that box should be checked and the form directs you to completing the auto purger checklist. However, if manual purging is employed, the appropriate box should be checked and the number of purge points recorded. Typically, each condenser drain pipe will have a purge point. The second page of the inspection checklist contains 18 questions that should be answered yes, no, or not applicable. The wording of each question is such that a yes answer is always positive and a no answer indicates a deficiency. Some questions may not be applicable to a particular condenser and should be answered NA. Item A asks if the equipment is labeled and has a legible nameplate. A proper label consists of the component name and ID number. Items B and C ask if the condenser is suitable for ammonia and operating within limits. Suitability for ammonia can be verified by the equipment specifications provided by the manufacturer. A key operating limit that should be monitored is the condensing pressure. Often the gauge measuring the condensing pressure will be located inside the machinery room. This condenser is rated for 350 PSIG and the operating pressure is 150 PSIG, so it is well below the maximum pressure. Item D requires the inspector to verify that supports and anchorage are adequate. Condensers are often mounted to I-beam structures or concrete piers. Sometimes they are bolted to the support structure, while other times they are welded directly to the structure. 
The condenser should have safe access for normal service and maintenance. Ideally, a condenser will have a permanent ladder and catwalk to access the pumps, fans, and mist eliminators. When this is not provided, facilities must utilize extension ladders or aerial lifts to access the top of the unit. Access to this condenser is exceptional. The installing contractors had the foresight to make the isolation valves accessible from the permanent catwalk. Checklist items F, G, and H are specific to leaks or equipment deficiencies. The inspector must do a visual inspection of the entire condenser to verify the equipment is free from vibration and leaks. Item F directs the inspector to check for ice buildup, which is extremely unlikely on an evaporative condenser. Where possible, the condenser should be inspected from all sides to avoid missing a deficiency. Item I inquires if the pipes are marked as required by IIAR Standard 2. Standard 2 requires piping mains, headers, and branches to be labeled with the following. The word ammonia should be printed in black letters. The physical state abbreviation, LIQ or VAP. The relative pressure, high or low. An arrow depicting the direction of flow in the pipe a service abbreviation indicating the purpose of the pipe. Items J and K pertain to valves associated with the condenser. All valves should be visually inspected. Deficiencies that should be recorded include corroded or painted stems, missing hand wheels, damaged seal caps, or excessive valve body corrosion. The condensers must have sufficient instrumentation for monitoring the operating conditions per item L in the checklist. Analog gauges must be present to observe the operating parameters, but it is acceptable for the gauges to be inside the machinery room. This condenser is configured with a sight glass on each condenser drain pipe, which is helpful when monitoring and troubleshooting the equipment. Item M pertains to the belts, sheaves, and couplings associated with the condenser fans and pumps. It is important to check that all rotating components are properly guarded to protect employees from injury. The belts and sheaves on condensers should be inspected for deficiencies. There is a slight chirp from this belt, but it was not significant enough to warrant a no answer on the checklist. Item N asks if the condenser's water distribution system is operating adequately. One way to do this is by lifting the mist eliminator while the condenser is in operation to ensure the flow pattern is correct. Item O asks if the condenser's coils, water sump, strainers, and mist eliminators are clean. The inspector will be required to open the access door to the condenser in order to complete this inspection. It is important to note that the condenser sump can sometimes be classified as a confined space, so adherence to the company's safe work practices is required. The coil and sump on this condenser are in excellent condition. Item P asks if there is a corrosion monitoring system in place. Chemical treatment of the condenser water is often provided by a third-party vendor who specializes in water chemistry. The inspector can verify that the chemicals are in place and that the associated chemical equipment appears to be functioning correctly. This facility has set up a PLC to monitor water conductivity and other parameters continuously. The second page of the inspection checklist concludes with items Q and R. Item Q requires the entire surface of the condenser to be inspected and any surface corrosion or pitting must be recorded as a deficiency. If a deficiency is noted, an additional check mark is required to indicate if the damage is slight or extensive. Item R serves as a catch-all for other concerns that the inspector may have observed. The area below can be used to write a description of the deficiencies. This concludes the IIAR6 Appendix B Annual Inspection Checklist for Evaporative Condensers. I trust you found this information useful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.